and welcome back to my channel. I'm Rena Scully coming to you from Japan and in today's video I'm going to show you what Tokyo Disney Sea is like during COVID. So I originally shot this like a genuine vlog where I'm talking throughout the whole thing, vocalizing what's going on, reacting, and telling you what we're doing next, etc. However, there is music playing throughout pretty much every crevice of Tokyo Disney Sea, and I couldn't isolate my audio against the background music audio, so I'm going to voice over a bunch of the clips I have in order to supplement information. I also wanted to clearly explain what Disney Sea's policies and protocols are during COVID and how we were able to get in in the first place. It was quite an experience to be able to go there during the pandemic and I was very surprised at a bunch of things so I thought that maybe you would want to see what it's like as well considering it's something that we normally can't ever see or experience. I really hope you enjoy it. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel to let me know that you like this type of content and in the comments please let me know if you'd go to Disney Sea if you lived in Japan right now. So I went to Disney Sea with Rin Rin and our friend Risa, who got our tickets for all of us. Thank you so much, Risa. Right now, both Disneyland Tokyo and Disney Sea are allowing 50% guest capacity. When they first reopened in August, they were only allowing 20%, but they are gradually increasing. As you can see, there are clearly fewer people than usual already, and Disney has been very clear and strict about social distancing. Basically, anywhere that forms a line is clearly spaced out and marked two meters apart, along with having cast members kindly reminding you to social distance. You are also required to wear a mask at all times unless you're eating. So in order to get tickets, you first have to check the website incessantly for which days are available, and then you purchase the tickets online, and then you have to download the Japanese Disney app so that the e-tickets can be delivered to your app. That's actually what's going to grant you access. There are no paper or physical tickets whatsoever. They don't even give you maps. Basically, they don't allow like touch transferring of anything, so everything is done through the app. The app is really useful because it tells you how long the wait times are in every location. And you need the app that's connected to your e-ticket to get an entry request and a standby pass for popular attractions and things like character photo meet and greets. Once the entry requests are close to capacity, it turns into a lottery system and you aren't guaranteed a time slot. So you pretty much want to get an entry request for everything you want to see and do as soon as you are checked in. And this is pretty much what has replaced fast passes for now. So here's the entranceway with the shot of Mount Prometheus from the journey to the center of the Earth ride. And although there are some dispersed crowds, it is nothing compared to what it's usually like, where you can't even take full steps without crashing into the person in front of you, especially in the entranceway. So the first thing we're doing is trying to get matching headbands. Um, we originally wanted the fall 2020 exclusive mini ears with the ribbons. That's why like our outfits are kind of matching, but they're all sold out everywhere, which is crazy because they have like limited capacity here. So like, how could they have sold out? There aren't as many as there should be. We went with the champagne pink mini ears, which worked out great with our outfits. It was really easy to get around even to the opposite side of the park because of the lack of people. It's obviously still populated, but you can tell it's not crowded. People usually bump into each other all day, but definitely not today. The benches were even empty. I think that's one of the things that shocked me the most because I've never in my life been able to sit at a bench at Disney. So we first tried to get on the Indiana Jones ride, but it was suspended and stopped for maintenance. There were actually a lot of rides that were under maintenance, including Raging Spirits right next door. But just as we were giving up on Indiana Jones, they just fixed the Raging Spirits roller coaster. So we're gonna get on that and I'm really excited. Oh 
it was awesome. I've never been able to ride Raging Spirits before because the fast passes are always completely maxed out. I felt so lucky. Then we made our way to the Arabian coast, Aladdin's area, and grabbed a quick snack to eat. They have these adorable Chandu curry mon, which is a bun filled with meat and curry. The food at Disney Sea is really affordable and pretty good. They have food courts and restaurants, but you could just fill up on street food. And Chandu is a character that I think only exists for Disney Sea. He's from Sinbad's Storybook Voyage, which is an indoor boat ride. Chandu is the little tiger cub companion. He kind of looks like a little baby Raja. I think the Arabian Coast is my favorite scenic area. I love that you pass through the Agrabah marketplace and it makes you feel like you're really in the palace courtyard. And it's incredible at night, which I will show you towards the end of this vlog. Next, we're heading all the way back towards the Toy Story area, which is on the opposite side of the park because it's almost our time slot for the Toy Story ride that we reserved in the morning. We only had like 15 minutes to get all the way around, but again, it wasn't an issue whatsoever because there were so few people. Like, look at this 20,000 leagues under the sea area. There's virtually no one here. And we made it. Here's another shot of how spaced out the lines are. Not only are there two meter markers on the ground, but they're also only using every other row. So overall, it's quite fun and very interesting because it's so empty, but I'm a little bit disappointed in the fact that there's literally no Halloween decorations whatsoever. Normally during Halloween, it's like decked out in Halloween stuff, but this year it's just as it normally is throughout the year. And I don't know, it's kind of strange. It's sad but true, there was no Halloweeniness whatsoever and there was no Halloween merch either so far except for those orange mini ears. I wonder if they're going to put up decorations for Christmas. I feel like they have to considering they're letting more people in gradually. Anyway, starving again, so we're heading over to grab another snack and some coffee. We went for the little Toy Story Alien Mochis, which are so yummy. I always get them when I come here. They come in threes and one is strawberry, one's custard, and the other is chocolate flavored. And that wasn't enough food, so we're on the move again to look for more things to eat. And on our way, we encountered these cute Duffy beers that are wearing masks. How very responsible. And then we made it to our Mita Mung. Mita is what mummy is in Japanese. So this is the Halloween Gyoza Mung, which is wrapped up like a mummy. Among the only Halloween things about Disney Sea this year. Oh my god, the Indiana Jones ride just got fixed and there's only a 20 minute wait! Oh, let's go! So obviously we should have known that the 20 minutes was not gonna be 20 minutes. It's 95 minutes. We're all the way across the bridge. It's over there, over there. So in the time that we were waiting, the sun went down because the sun sets super fast in Japan during fall and winter and it was dark by the time we actually got to the ride. But we got to go on it and it was awesome as always. All right, we just got on the Indiana Jones ride. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was great. Was it scary? It was too scary for <laughs> I, I had to be in between you guys or else there's no way I would go on this ride. I was gonna ride alone because I thought it was like two per. I was like, I'll do it alone, but we were able to sit together. Yokata. Ne, yokata. It was it was worth the wait. All right. It was so much fun. Yeah. It's so exciting. It's like one of my favorite rides. I was so happy. Yeah, all, day. all day. They told us it broke. Right. They told us it broke. Close for like the whole day, yeah. Very much. Until yeah. Like four, yeah. Four well, we don't know because we were waiting for like two hours, so now we have no sense of time. <laughs> and now we're just on our way to Agrabah because it is so beautiful at night. In order to get to the Arabian coast, you have to pass through the little mermaid area, which is also super pretty at night, as you can see. And here we are back at Agrabah. 
I love how the fountain looks at night and a little later they do a short fireworks show in lieu of the huge night performance at the entrance harbor. I'll show you in a little bit, but it looks so beautiful when you watch from the palace courtyard. Time for dinner and we're at the Agraba food court which is ridiculously empty. Yay! Oh I'm sorry, it's called the Casba food court. My bad. I got some jasmine tea and the veggie curry and it comes with a naan. Sugoi. And it was only 840 yen for the curry. I'm very impressed. There are going to be flashing lights, so please skip this part if you are sensitive to that. I know it's not great on camera, but it's really nice in person, especially being surrounded by the atmosphere and because there were so few people around. And this is our final ride for the night, the carousel. The ones you can't ride on are clearly marked and squared off, so you can ride this one and this one, but not this one. The park closes at 9 and it's almost 8.30 so we're heading back to the entrance to check out the gift shops as our final stop. I love Tokyo Disney's gift shop because they have very specifically Japanese merch like chopsticks, wagashi which are Japanese confectionaries, and osenbe snacks or savory puff rice cake snacks that you can't get anywhere else. This is like the only Halloween thing that exists for 2020. Oh my god, I lied. Look at how cute Pooh is. Halloween Pooh. Halloween Boo. So cute. But that's it. <laughs> And thus concludes our day at Disney Sea. I think we got to do pretty much everything we wanted. Overall, it was very splendid. You can clearly see the difference between 100% capacity and 50% capacity. Like even here while we're leaving, there's normally a mad rush to get onto the monorails and the station is complete chaos at the end of the night with people battling to get on, but not tonight. Everyone's super calm and just waiting their turn quietly. So here are some of my final thoughts, starting with the pros. I am very impressed with how Disney is handling social distancing. Everyone is following the rules and there are hand sanitizing stations everywhere. Plus the app reservation system makes it so easy for you to plan your day and go about things optimally so you don't ever have to encounter large crowds. It was also really easy to take ideal photos because of the lack of people and that was really awesome for us. I think we all got the shots we wanted without having to wait for people to pass. And there was no wait for any of the bathrooms at any time whatsoever which was amazing. There were also barely any wait times for food. I think we waited maybe 10 minutes at most. There also wasn't even a wait at the gift shop in the end. I didn't show this part, but they were only trickling in a few people at a time to make sure that the building wasn't like overstuffed with people. And there were so many cashiers. I didn't wait for a cashier. It just like happened immediately. And I know I mentioned this a couple times already in the video, but I loved being able to get around to where we wanted in the park in a moment's notice. You are never able to do that normally. And we got to go on like six or seven rides total, which is a lot. If I recall correctly, I think I've only ever been able to go on like four rides throughout the whole day maximum. You're normally just waiting in different lines for the majority of the time you're there at Disney. But now for some cons. I think the lack of Halloween decorations was what disappointed me the most. I really hope they decorate for Christmas, which I think they will. And I was also really bummed out that we couldn't find any of this year's exclusively released merch, like the lacy mini ears. They were completely, completely sold out, which tells me that they only produced a small amount 
which is understandable, but we were really looking forward to it. So like I couldn't help but be bummed out about it. But that was really it. Overall, the pros clearly outweigh the cons. What did you think of Disney Sea during the pandemic? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And remember to turn on the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you again so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next video. Sanjamatane!